Much like other people, I was extremely skeptical about 12-step programs, but in this video, I'm gonna talk to you about my experience and why I decided to work one. What is up everybody? This is Chris from The Rewired Soul where we talk about the problem but focus on the solution. And welcome back to another week where I take a subject about mental health and I dive deep into it to help better educate you and help you out with your own mental health. This week I'm going to be focusing not only addiction but 12 step programs in particular. And here's why. There are a lot of people, and I was one of them, who are very misinformed about 12 step programs. They think all these things yet they've never fully tried to even consider that they might be wrong about the situation. There's a lot of misinformation, so please do me a favor. Even if you're not an addict or alcoholic in recovery or trying to get clean, please share this video. Addiction affects one out of every 12 people, which means there is almost a 100% chance that if you know at least 12 people, you know an addict or alcoholic. So please do me a favor and watch and share these videos so you can be better educated and maybe help somebody's life. So the first disclaimer that I have to throw out there, which I might put on all these videos this week is I am not a representative of any 12-step program. I'm not a spokesperson. I don't know anything more than anybody else. I am merely here to share my experience, okay? Okay, so my first little bout with a 12-step program was through Alcoholics Anonymous, all right? Uh, many years ago, about eight or nine years ago, my baby mama threatened to leave me and she said, look, you're either going to a 12-step program or I'm leaving you. So. Just to shut her up, I went to AA. And when I say this, when I talk about this first time with AA, I usually use air quotes and say I tried AA, because I didn't try anything. As soon as I pulled up, it was in a church parking lot, and just like the brakes in my head went, Ugh! What? Like, I immediately thought that this was a bunch of religious fanatics who were gonna try to shove Jesus down my throat. And growing up here in Las Vegas, I grew up around a lot of Mormons who were always trying to like get me to convert and baptize me and stuff. And I'm like, nah, I ain't about that life. So basically what I did, I went to these meetings for three months, just sat there, stared at the clock, zoned out, didn't do anything. So that's why I say I tried it. I didn't really try anything, I just sat there. So on June 23rd, 2012, that's my clean date, and I had to go to 12-step meetings. Part of the sober living program I was in was I had to go to five meetings a week. So I was so skeptical about these meetings and I, I can't emphasize that enough. See, if you're like me, I thought that people who just walked into a 12 step meeting, they were like, hey, you know what? Like, I'm ready to get clean. I'm ready to fully embrace these 12 step programs. Like, that's not how it was. And I couldn't be further from that. Like, I was so skeptical. I thought it was religious. I still thought that they were a cult. I'm like, why do I need to read this book? Why do I need a sponsor? Why are you telling me I need a higher power? I don't even believe in God. What is all this nonsense? But I'm a very analytical person. So I decided to analyze the situation and see what's going on. So I started going to these meetings and for three months, three months, I didn't do anything. I often tell my clients who I work with, like I'm never gonna pester you to get a sponsor because I sat around and did nothing but listen for three months. I was so skeptical that I just wanted to watch. I just wanted to watch people and see what their experience was and see if this is something maybe I should do. Something that makes me laugh to this day is that people think they're so unique, like people in general, but addicts and alcoholics are like, no, I'm different, I'm different, I don't need this, I'm different, I'm different, right? Now, in these meetings, you can have dozens of people or hundreds of people, and you can divide them into two groups. Two, not 50, just two groups. This is what I saw from gathering the data after three months of just sitting there. I saw that there were just two groups of people, okay? So in group number one, we'll call this the happy group, okay? Everybody in group number one, not only were they happy, but they were sober and they were sane. And here's the thing, like I was so out of my mind when I first got clean, like these people had this calm about them, right? It didn't seem like their brain was going a million miles a minute. It didn't seem like they were hating their life. It didn't seem like they were talking down to themselves constantly. These are all the things that I was struggling with. I felt like a crazy person. I'm sitting here, I'm like, how are you doing this? The other thing that baffled me about their happiness 
was, their happiness was independent of circumstances. Here's what I mean by that. You can have one person in there who's like a lawyer making like six figures a year, and then you can have somebody who's like a McDonald's drive through employee, and they're both equally as happy. And that blew my mind because I lived an entire life thinking that in order to be happy, you needed stuff. You needed the house, you needed the cars, you needed the vacations, you needed the big screen TV, the video game systems, the nice furniture, you needed all these things. But how did you have somebody who's way up here financially and someone who's down here financially, but they're both equally as happy? Like that's something that I wanted. And let me tell you this too, I went to plenty of meetings where homeless people were going in there to get sober and stay sober, and some of them were happier than I was. And I really had to sit back and reevaluate my life and say, Chris, it's pretty messed up when a homeless person is happier than you are. So that's group number one. Now let's take a look at group number two, and we'll do a little sad emoji right there, okay? So these people, there was kind of three different types of people in this group. The first one is something that we call the dry drunk. What's a dry drunk? A dry drunk is somebody who's sober, but they're still miserable. Like, I remember hearing people share and they're like, yeah, you know, like, my kids were kind of a pain in the butt today. My wife's making me mad. Uh, I hate my job, but you know, I'm like three years sober, so that's cool. And I'm sitting there, I'm like, what are you talking about? Like, I kind of made a deal with myself very early on. I said, if I'm gonna be miserable, I'm gonna be miserable, drunk and high. Like, I wouldn't do this thing if I was gonna stay miserable. Okay, so that's the first person in the bad group. The next person, I call these people the revolving door people, right? You see these people come back into a meeting just crying and shedding tears and just angry with themselves and situations and stuff like that because they keep relapsing. They keep coming in and out, in and out, in and out. And the last group of people, I'm gonna put a little question mark. I, it was like, where, where did they go? Some of these people, who knows, maybe they didn't like it and they never came back. I don't know what happened to them, but it didn't take long for me to get involved in these meetings and say, hey, where's so-and-so? And they're like, oh, they died. I'm like, oh, okay, right? So now that I'm sitting back, I've, I've gathered my data, I've divided everybody in these two groups. What is the difference? What is the difference between these two groups? So the first group, the happy group, they all said the same thing, okay? They said, I go to meetings, I have a sponsor, I have a support group, and I work the steps. Every single one of them said that. Every single one. I was waiting for one of these people in group number one to be like, hey, I don't do anything and my life's incredible, but I never heard it. Then there's group number two, right? The, the second group, I don't think I really wanna be in that group. Well, what are they doing? What is wrong over here? What are these dry drunks doing? Why are these people coming in and out? They always said the same thing. I don't go to meetings, I don't have a sponsor, I don't work the steps, I don't have a support group. They all said the same thing. And I'm sitting there, I'm like, okay, there's this happy group, happy, sane, and sober. And then there's group, this group over here who's legitimately miserable or dead, right? Like, and here's the thing. Whenever somebody relapsed, I listened very carefully. Like one of the best ways to stay clean is to learn from other people's mistakes. And the people who relapsed always said the same thing. They never got the sponsor, they never worked the steps, they, they weren't going to enough meetings, all sorts of things, right? And here's the thing, in my groups, at my rehab, I often say it's almost like a magic trick that I don't even plan out. When I share this in groups, I say, can anybody relate to what I just said? And you always see hands go up. There are countless people who come back to treatment who were doing well for years. They were doing well for years, but they stopped doing what they were doing before, and it led to a relapse. And that's something that I remember every single day. You gotta understand, I'm coming up on six years sober. I have met people with 10, 15, 20 years sober at my treatment center, and I listen very carefully. I'm like, what happened? What happened? And they say the same thing. I stopped doing what I learned how to do. And I'm like, okay. So, like I said, like, I will let all of you do the same thing. Like, if you don't have faith in these programs, if you think they're full of crap, if you think they're religious cults, do what I did. Don't do anything, just go there, Listen and observe, and I promise, I promise you that you will see the exact same two groups that I saw. In fact, let's do this. I know I got a bunch of people in recovery who subscribe to my channel. Leave comments down below. Let me know, let me know your experience. Did this happen to you? Did this lead to a relapse? Or do you see this a lot? Is it the same set of things that leads people back out? 
or keeps them miserable? Let me know down in the comments. But anyways, again, like I said, please share this video. I really just wanna educate people about these programs because they're free, free, okay? So there's a lot of misinformation that is potentially keeping people away from something that might save their lives, all right? But if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. And if you are new here, I'm always making videos to help you out with your mental and emotional well-being. Click that little round subscribe button. And if you wanna check out some other videos I've made about addiction, boom, I put in a entire playlist right there called Ask an Addict. Check it out. All right. Thank you so, so much for watching. Go check out some meetings and I'll see you next time.